Area residents emphatically told state regulators Tuesday night that they do not want a limestone quarry in their area. Two words in the weather department here in East Alabama for the next several days, wet and warm. We'll have the complete forecast details coming up. Coming up in sports, last night was senior night for a couple schools in wrestling here in East Alabama. It was also senior night for a couple basketball teams. The AM Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Mike Stettem. And I'm Katie Edwards. A large number of area residents gathered at the Oxford Civic Center Tuesday night, most of them opponents of a proposed limestone quarry on the border of Calhoun and Cleburne counties. They made their objections to officials from the Alabama Department of Environmental Management who have given their preliminary approval to the quarry. Angie Boatwright of Adams Water Division explained at the outset of the public hearing that her department considers only the impact of the quarry on air and water quality, and it does not regulate the explosions or other aspects of an operation. She said that the developer of the quarry, Pillar Materials LLC of Oxford, has worked with her office to meet all of the requirements for both of these permits. The department has made a preliminary determination that compliance by Pillar Materials LLC with the terms and conditions of the proposed MPDS permit will not result in violations of applicable state water quality standards which are designed to protect human health and the environment. The preliminary determination will be reconsidered after all comments are received and reviewed. Lance Taylor, the owner of Pillar Materials and its parents' company, Taylor Engineering, said he has been a local building contractor for years, and he's worked for many local industries and governments. He said he wants to develop the quarry in an effort to bring down the local price for aggregate. That's a material made up of pieces of broken or crushed stone that's used in building and construction. Aggregate prices in the U.S. have increased around 47% on average during that time period. But in this area, lack of competition has fueled a price increase of over 250%. I care that this not only affects general contractors like me, but also concrete, asphalt prices, farmers, our cities, counties, our state, DOT, and consequently everyone in this room. Taylor said both he and his wife are natives of Cleburne County and they've run a successful business since 2008. He says his goal is to meet all of the federal and state regulations if Adam approves his permits. I have worked on the quarry permits with a group of qualified engineers for over a year. And these permits meet or exceed all Adam's requirements. Adam has reviewed and amended the draft permits Pillar materials will uphold every requirement listed in each permit. I strive to always do the right thing, but one thing I always do is keep my word. I know it's difficult to put blind faith in someone you do not know, but I can assure you that I will be a good neighbor and Pillar materials will be a benefit to this community. ADEM officials then turned the floor over to the opponents of the quarry, including Calhoun County Commission Chairman Danny Shears, who said he had initially supported the applications. But the more I dug into this and the more people reached out to me and gave me information um, as a representative of the people beside me and behind me for Calhoun County, I just felt uh, my stance changed. I felt like that Due to the things I heard on the on the water quality, the air quality, uh, blasting, noise, I just felt like the overwhelming majority of the people that I represent were against the court. Prior to the public hearing, the Oxford City Council voted to add its voice to the opponents of the quarry. At a work session Tuesday night, the, can the council authorized Mayor Alton Kraft to tell ADEM that the city would not give its approval to a portion of the quarry operation within its city limits. Also speaking out Tuesday night was Belinda Kilgore, a member of the Homeowners Association of Cider Ridge, which is near the site of the proposed quarry. We have families from young families, young children, to, you know, 
families that 80 year old couples that live in our area and this is their home and they take pride in their home and I just you know of course we are against the quarry and then also you know we're worried about the PCBs that's very everybody's aware here in Catlin County and they're dominant right now but when you start shaping this earth that God has created it's going to stir up and it's going to stir up more than PCBs also opposing the quarry is the Coosa River Keepers Organization, which has hired experts to look at the applications and raise questions about the process. A member of that group, Justin Overton, said ADEM's process of notifying citizens about potential hazards is flawed, and she criticized the regulatory process used by the department. Coosa River Keeper does not believe ADEM should grant this permit. ADEM should reconsider its boilerplate permit language because there's nothing substantial in this permit that considers the possible adverse consequences of the effluent discharge of this quarry and how those consequences could be avoided to meet the department's mission to assure that all citizens of the state have a safe, healthful, and productive environment. ADEM officials said they will review all of the comments made Tuesday night along with written comments received by this evening before announcing whether they will issue the permits for that limestone quarry. When we return, the McClellan Development Authority's Oversight Committee is being reorganized after years of inactivity. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. A group of elected officials responsible for overseeing the development of McClellan convened in a formal meeting Tuesday after several years of inactivity. The McClellan Development Authority Oversight Committee is composed of the Calhoun County Commission, the Anniston City Council, and all local legislative delegation members. As the name indicates, the committee exists to oversee the McClellan Development Authority, an organization that was formed by law in 2009 to manage the development of the former fort. In the 10-minute meeting Tuesday, the committee selected State Senator Keith Kelly of Anniston to serve as its chairman and formally requested records detailing the McClellan Development Authority's business dealings. As far as where it goes from here, it depends on the information we've got. The information may come back and everything looks good, and uh, we may discuss that. may want them to come and tell us a little bit more about certain things that they're doing. It may be that everything looks good, and we ask them maybe what their plans are for the future or could be really about anything. The information from the McClellan Development Authority is expected to be submitted within six weeks. The Oversight Committee plans to meet after the submission to consider the information. Four area men are behind bars following an undercover operation in Oxford targeting adults who are attempting to solicit sexual contact with minors. Oxford Police Chief Bill Partridge identifies the four suspects as Quinte Jermaine Jackson of Jacksonville, Ronnie Fred Miles of Ragland, Candarius Ration Harvey of Munford, and Alvin Darren Suttle of Talladega. All four have been charged with traveling to meet a child for an unlawful sex act. The investigation was led by the East Metro Area Crime Center's Human Trafficking and Crimes Against Children Task Force, along with the Oxford Police Department. Also helping with this case are the Calhoun County District Attorney's Office, the West Alabama Human Trafficking Task Force, the University of Alabama's REACT program, and the Glencoe Police Department. When we come back, Aniston's biking and running communities are given a place to call their own. 
Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. For the past seven years, the Northeast Alabama Bicycle Association has been renovating a rented building on West 10th Street in Anniston and turning it into the club's headquarters. Last night, the club celebrated its ownership of the building as their previous landlords, Dell and Ginger Marsh, formally turned over the property to the club. At a ribbon cutting ceremony, the group thanked the former owners. One, two, three. Thanks to the Marshes. Woo! Ken Hickman, president of the Bicycle Club, says his membership is grateful for the opportunity to own their own headquarters building, which they share with the Anniston Runners Club. This building has been a blessing to the community. It's been a great place for us to come uh, fellowship. We've had all kinds of events here. Um, we have a, a, a large um, high school mountain biking um, community that's uh, been able to utilize this. We've had some big events here in Anderson that we've been able to use it. Um, and it's, it's kind of a home for, for the soccer community. So it's, it's really great that it's now ours. Okay, so getting the bikes ready for the spring. All this news recently, we've been talking about things about springtime. It's, nice. it's got to be coming, it's right? Gotta be. It's got to be. More information on that hopefully is coming from our friend John Holder in the EAN Weather Center. John, tell us about the weather. Mike and Katie, get ready for above average temperatures and get ready for above average rainfall. Both of those things in store for the next several days across all of East Alabama. And we'll have the complete forecast details next. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction, within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. Well, just a week ago, temperatures were way below the average across East Alabama. Now they're way above the average and they're going to stay there. 65 for the high today. 10 degrees above the average. The low this morning was only 54 degrees. Folks, that was 20 degrees above our average for this time of year. Record high temperatures, 76 degrees. The record low, minus one. We will not be anywhere close to that coming up soon. And the sunrise and sunset times, adding two minutes of daylight to your day. Coming up 644, your sunrise tomorrow morning. The sun setting this evening at 506. It's time for weather on your street. And tonight, we're going to take you out to the Appalachian Highway at Hoax Bluff, right there by Hoax Bluff High School. It is going to be a rainy night in the bluff there on the Coosa River. Plenty of rain tonight, 60 for the low. Again, temperatures about 25 degrees above average overnight tonight. More of the same coming up tomorrow. A flood watch that's been in effect since 12 noon today. That will be in effect all the way until midnight tomorrow night. The Cedartown Highway in Piedmont. Get ready for some flooding rains possibly. The rainfall could be heavy at times in the next 48 hours or so, but the warm weather's not going anywhere. 68 tomorrow in Piedmont. As we look at the start of the weekend coming up on Friday, well, the start of the weekend is going to be just like the end of the week. More rain on South Allen Avenue in South Anniston. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 60s, maybe even a rumble of thunder out there in the next 48 hours or so, and plenty of rainfall. Seven day forecast for all of East Alabama. High rain chances, a 100% chance of rain in the forecast, then an 80% chance of rain, an 80% chance of rain. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 60s to low 70s. Finally, as we get into the weekend, the back half of the weekend, we're going to be looking 
at some cooler weather coming. But again, temperatures are going to stay above the average for this time of year, uh, basically in the mid to upper 50s. Nighttime lows getting back down in the 30s. But again, for the most part, we're going to be above average for this time of the year. Let's take a look at the rainfall totals. Now again, we showed you a graphic earlier in the week that showed the rainfall totals of three to four inches, four to six inches over in West Alabama. And you're saying, well, John, this looks a lot less. We're only showing an inch and a half to two inches, two to three inches in Gadsden and Etowah County. Keep in mind the, the graphic we showed you earlier in the week, that was rainfall totals for the entire week. This is just from this morning through Thursday evening. So this is basically the next 24 hours, an inch or two of rainfall just in that time frame across East Alabama. I'll be back here at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning for your breakfast forecast. And right now we're going to talk about senior night wrestling at Welburn High School in sports with Namath Pitts. Thanks, John. We are approaching the last week of competition in East Alabama before sectionals in state arrive. That means that most teams are hosting senior nights. We have the highlights from one of those from last night. Last night was senior night for Ben Carroll and the Welburn Panthers. They celebrated Andrew Salter. They also celebrated Noah Screws and Chloe Screws. And then the last senior that Walter Welburn celebrated last night for senior night was Mary Jane Perrin. Mary Jane Perrin helped start the girls wrestling program. Noah Screws has been in the program for four years now, and this is only Andrew's second year wrestling. Again, Mary Jane has been instrumental in helping Walter Welburn start their girls program. Welburn started the night last night against the Oxford Yellow Jackets. It was literally pin or be pinned. Welburn then wrestled Lincoln. Oxford and Lincoln wrestled after that as Walter Welburn officiated a youth wrestling tournament that featured Welburn, Cleburne County, and Ramburn. Last night, though, the Oxford Yellow Jackets would sweep the night as they beat Walter Welburn 60-24, Oxford beat Lincoln 76-12, and Lincoln beat Welburn 54-28. Last night was also senior night for Austin Bragg and the Piedmont Bulldogs. They celebrated Isaac Bailey, Matt Jones, and Zeth Weaver. Isaac Bailey has been a hammer for the Piedmont Bulldogs as he is one of the top wrestlers in the state in his weight class. He is the team captain and for many great reasons. Last night, Piedmont hosted Leeds and Sacks. Piedmont swept the night as they beat Leeds 72-9 and Piedmont beat Sacks 72-8 and the Leeds Green Wave beat Sacks 42-30. Piedmont is set to host the Piedmont Dogfight Tournament this weekend. The Alexandria Valley Cubs traveled to Talladega last night as they traveled to the Alabama School for the Blind. Alabama School for the Blind hosted Alexandria and White Plains. Alexandria swept the night, winning both duels. Alexandria beat White Plains 71-6 and beat Alabama School for the Blind 66-15. White Plains boys survived illness, foul troubles, and a half-court shot to win it in overtime. Sacks stunned Piedmont. The Anderson boys topped Westminster Christian. Oxford lost another area game on senior night, and then Jacksonville, Weaver, Pleasant Valley, JCA, and Heflin all won. In girls' hoop, Oxford, Piedmont, Cherokee County, Jacksonville, and Alexandria rolled. We have all the results from last night. Oxford celebrated senior night last night by recognizing TJ Allen, Caleb Sanders, Jordan Kelly, Earl Tyson, and Trace Truitt. All have had their impact on this program. Jalen Alexander poured in 27 points, with Oxford down 42 to 31 in the fourth quarter last night. He shot the Yellow Jackets back into the game with consecutive three-pointers, followed by Kelly's three to close Oxford within four points. Oxford has really missed TJ Allen this season. Most of this season, TJ Allen has watched. The Oxford senior has watched close games, lots of them, many ending in disappointment. He's watched his Oxford string of five Calhoun County championships ended. He watched knowing that watching was best for his long-term health. There's no playing through a fractured disc. He watched last night as Oxford fell on senior night to Fort Payne, 51 to 45. A night after beating Jacksonville to set up a potential coin flip to host the area tournament, White Plains got a class 4A area 10 scare. That scare came in the form of Cherokee County's Eli Martin, who poured in 34 points. His five three-pointers included a half-court shot at the buzzer to force overtime. 
Josh Wheeler poured in 28 points of his own, and the Wildcats survived to stay on course for that potential coin flip. White Plains missed guard Paul Lobby, who was out with the flu, and center Carter Johnson ran into some foul trouble. Wheeler hit five three-pointers on the way to his big night. White Plains' other top performers were Carter Johnson, 13 points, Coleman Ray, 7 points, and Daniel Williams, 7 points. Cherokee County's other top performer was Ben Mosley, 13 points, as White Plains won 67-63. Devin Barksdale scored 16 points with three three-pointers and dished out five assists to lead the Jacksonville Golden Eagles. The Golden Eagles' other top performers were Jaquan Irvin, 13 points, four rebounds, four assists, Aaron Nixon, nine points, five rebounds, and Quinn Weaver, nine points, as Jacksonville beat Asheville 64 to 58. Joshua Todd and Christian Hall scored 16 points apiece, and Sachs rallied from a 14 point deficit to stun Piedmont in a Class 3 Area 11 game at Piedmont. Hall went four for five on three point attempts, and Sachs' other top performers were Lawan Curry, 10 points, Anthony Bothwell, 8 points, 5 assists, and Dorian Walker, 4 points, 11 rebounds. Piedmont's top performers were Colton Proctor, 15 points, Ishmael Bethel, 12 points, and Cole Wilson, 11 points, as Sachs stuns Piedmont, 54-51. Ja'Cory Lane hit 4 of Aniston's 9 three-pointers and scored 16 points, and the Aniston Bulldogs rebounded from its semifinals loss to Jacksonville in the Calhoun County semifinals with a big win on the road. Aniston's other top performers were Isaiah Allen, nine points, Kyron Brown, one three-pointer, and Devin Coleman, one three-pointer, as Aniston beat Westminster Christian 38 to 35. Gabe King hit four three-pointers on route to 26 points as Weaver won in Class 3A Area 11 play. Weaver's other top performers were Keyshawn Allen, 23 points, Harper Williams, 13 points, and DJ Marbury, 13 points. For Welburn, their top performers were Ray Williams with 12 points, 5 rebounds, 2 steals, Ollie Boots, 16 points, and Jackson Long, 6 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, but Weaver dominates Welburn 87-50. Braxton Solster scored 12 points, and the Raiders scored a victory on the road. Pleasant Valley's other top performers were Barnwell, 10 points, Hunter Sparks, 9 points, and Jaden Sparks, 7 points. Raglan's top performers were Braden Collins, 23 points, and Takorian Souls, 17 points, as Pleasant Valley beat Raglan, 56 to 47. Jesse Ganaway led Jacksonville Christian Academy with 30 points, 11 rebounds, and five steals. The Thunder's other top performers were Bryson Dowdy, 15 points, eight steals, and Noah Lee, seven points, 15 rebounds, six assists, four steals, as Jacksonville Christian beat Cedar Bluff, 55 to 45. Gray Freeman led Cleburne County with 10 points. The Tigers' other top performers were Jacob Cavender, 8 points, Cade Schubert, 7 points, Cy Altman, 7 points, and Gavin Bates, 6 points, as the Cleburne County Tigers beat Central Clay, 40-32. Now for girl action. It was senior night for Melissa Bennett and the Oxford Yellow Jackets as they celebrated Zayana Whitfield and Jamia Gaston. What Whitfield and Gaston have meant to the girls' team showed against Fort Payne last night. Whitfield's three-pointer steadied Oxford after Fort Payne turned a 41-21 third-quarter deficit into a 48-45 threat in the fourth quarter. The Tennessee State signee did like she's done all season long, scoring 33 points added to Ava Thomas's 25-point night, which included five three-pointers. Whitfield scored 11 fourth-quarter points. Gaston hit one of two free throws for her point and in a typical night for one of the team's three-point threats, but she always impacts the game. Coming off of that, they won a key area game last night and will play a winner-take-all game for the right to host the area tournament. They will play Gaston City this Friday, but Oxford last night beat Fort Payne 71-52. Carson Young hit six three-pointers on route to 20 points and Piedmont improved to 14-8 on the season with a victory in Class 3A Area 11 play. Piedmont's other, Piedmont's other top performers was Ava Pope with 17 points. Sack's top performers were Jacqueline Carter, 13 points, and Madison Turner, 5 points, 10 rebounds. Piedmont cruises past Sacks, 64 to 32. Macy Leah hit three three-pointers on the way to 15 points to lead Cherokee County to victory in Class 4A Area 10 play. 
White Plains and Coach Sprayberry dropped their 14th consecutive loss. Cherokee County's other top performer was Deanna Starr with 13 points, and White Plains' top performers were Addie Bradley, 15 points, and Cooper Martin, 8 points, as Cherokee County beat White Plains 63-33. to Nevaeh Nicholson led Jacksonville with 13 points. The Golden Eagles' other top performers were J.C. Taylor with 12 points, 3 steals, Alexis Phillips, 11 points, 3 steals, and Lanny Lozano, 9 points, 3 three-pointers, 5 assists, 3 steals, and DeAsia Pro Throw with 8 points, 8 steals, as Jacksonville routed Asheville 66-19. to in the final game of the evening, Charlie Paris and Presley Slayton scored 13 points to lead Alexandria past Lincoln. The Valley Cubs' other top performers were Alyssa Hunt, 7 points, and Leah Patterson, 6 points. Coach Craig Kiker and the Alexandria Valley Cubs sweep Lincoln in area play as they win 54-33. And that is it for EAN Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for that update, Namath, and thank you for watching us today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, and on our website, EastAlabamaNow.com. You can just go to our video feed and watch us whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Thursday for your news on your schedule.